Hey Dave, what a beautiful day here in Itman, West Virginia. Oh, absolutely. And we're here at the Itman Company store. Uh, this is one of the more fantastic properties in all of West Virginia. A company store for a mining coal company built in 1926 on the National Regis Register of Historic Places. And, uh, and what a building. You want to take a tour? Absolutely. This is fantastic. Look at the size of this thing. And we're, uh, we're pretty close to Mullins, West Virginia, aren't we? Yes, I think we're about two or three miles from Mullins, West Virginia, along the Guyandot River. So this is an area that's uh, experiencing a thriving tourism economy now. ATVing, the uh, Pinnacle Creek ATV Trail is just right behind us here. The Guyandot River on this side is now a kayaking stream. Uh, the Twin Falls State Park is just over the hill from here. So this this uh, structure is located in a, in a in a growing tourism region. Okay. Well, great. Uh, let's uh, get a break in the traffic here and go take a look at this fantastic building. Let's go. There's thousands of cubic yards of uh, cut stone here, Dave. Oh man, isn't it incredible? It is. This <laughs> is the company store section of the building. There were two main sections. We're going into the company store first. Okay. Now in this part of the company store, what would they have uh, traded here? Well, anything that coal miners and their families would have needed. Okay. Uh, this area was somewhat isolated. It was a rail journey to the nearest town, otherwise Mullins down the way. But in the 1920s, the roads weren't great, so people who lived in this community, the miners and their families, uh, were forced more or less to come to this company store to get their to get their goods wow. and you had practically everything that you would need to live delivered are uh, here in the, here on the property um, upstairs that so we won't be going up there uh, is another large room that was the uh, where you would buy your appliances down here was more dry goods clothes look at this window over here oh wow look at the design of that Mm -hmm. This building is rendered in what would be called a classical revival architecture. Okay. And so you see uh, windows like this, archways throughout that harken back to the uh, to the Renaissance and uh, the Italian uh, version of that. And, and Italians were the ones who did the stonework here. Really? Masons. Yeah. From uh, who had come in from from Italy, there nobody did masonry like them, and uh, they were employed here. Uh, several uh, dozen um, workers who worked with a few of these very uh, very gifted stonemasons to to carry out the construction of this building. Interesting. Okay. So, and and the stone. Where did the stone actually come from? The stone was quarried just across the river. Really? And uh, brought over here and cut and put in place. Amazing. Um, beautiful, beautiful fantastic stone. Fantastic building. And we won't be going through the whole thing, but let's take a, let's, uh, let's go over and get, it, get us to the other building. Okay. I want you to see this loggia. Loggia. So this is a loggia, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Wow. Look at these arches. Dave, would this here have been a, uh, a bulletin board on slate? Yes, if you'll go on to the National Park Service's uh, website for 
uh, the National Historic District uh, or National Historic Register. It'll give you some more information on this. Okay. Uh, this is slate and some of the instructions for for miners and, and their families, uh, different discounts, that sort of thing would have been written on here. Okay. Look at the uh, at the uh, work almost a hundred years ago how tight these joints and the stone are still just like it was laid yesterday yeah absolutely it's like it was fantastic fantastic work and it's still standing and will stand for many many years to come yeah as many cosmetic problems as this building requires and of course by being on the national register there will there are grants and tax credits available grants of up to 50 percent to cover the uh, cost of anything needed to keep this structure going okay uh, so it's like a roof they would cover up the 50 it would cover a, a roof yeah in okay. fact roof roofing is a priority when it comes to these old buildings you've got to keep moisture out of these old buildings and so roofs are priorities okay okay well great and so this is the center way of the legia look at the built-in iron seating that's throughout here mm -hmm. that's amazing can you imagine all the people that sat out here uh, for the shade and to uh, eat and and have a soda and uh just talk about what was going on in the roaring 20s yeah i think a lot about that yeah. many i've talked to some people who were children who sat out here eating candy and uh waiting on their moms to get done with their shopping or going into the the offices for the pocahontas fuel company which is in this section of the building that we're going to look at Okay. And now, even if you, if you go online, you'll see all kinds of photographs of this building. Uh -huh. um, many people come to get their prom pictures taken here. Sure. Uh, there's been some wedding photos taken here. It's just a beautiful piece of, of exceptional classical architecture. And it's really, uh, it's in the hearts of the people here, this, this building. Yeah. They're very close to it. So yeah, this would have been the Walmart of its day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it absolutely would have been. Amazing. It, it was the everything of its day. I mean, it's, this complex included the company store, dentist's offices, post office, the offices of the, of the, of the company itself. Um, That's amazing. I didn't realize that they had... Uh, doctor's offices dentist offices and things like that that would have been here but that makes that makes perfect sense for the size of the building well what coal uh, operators came to find out by the 1920s this is one of the later uh, coal company office uh, store complexes um, built uh, they discovered that the the stores really were the centers of the these coal camp communities mm -hmm. and so it was uh it was it man's uh, design to put everything into one central structure and if you get online you'll also see and you'll see this in the, in our narrative for this historic property is that there are benches, or earthworks, terraces around here. Everything about this town was, was planned. So Mr. Mann planned out the whole design of the town, uh, putting the miners' houses in behind here and the shopkeepers' houses and so forth. Yes, yes, everything was central. Um, yeah. And he employed Alexander Behood, who was a well-known architect, uh, who worked throughout the state in nearby Virginia. Um, to render this building. I've heard that uh, Mr. Mann had uh, seen a similar building in Italy at one time and during his travels and had asked uh, uh, the architect Mahood to, to, to build something similar. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, how big was the coal business actually down here? I mean, uh, did the, did the C&O haul everything out or what railroad or railroads did we have going on at that time? I believe that the, the main railroad through uh, this area for a long while was the Virginian Railroad, which uh, was uh, worked with the Norfolk and Southern. Okay. And uh, as a matter of fact, folks from the Virginian Railroad Histor Historical Society are coming up 
next week for a tour of the property. Okay. So we would have actually had two working railroad lines, the, uh, I guess it was N and W at that time, mm -hmm. and the Virginian Railroad. And, mm -hmm. and the Virginian Railroad was connected with Henry Ford, am I correct on that? No, that I'm not sure of. I know it was, it was connected with Henry Rogers and somehow Mark Twain, but I'm still doing research in, you know, we've just begun to work on the narrative and the history behind this property as we bring it to market. Interesting. So I'm sure we'll find lots of interesting tidbits to discover. Yeah. Well, if I might add something here, I've Please always do. wanted to see this building. Uh, as you know, I grew up in Greenbar County at the little community called Fort Spring on the Greenbrier River. And Isaac T. Mann grew up as a child in Fort Spring, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And one of the tunnels on the uh, C&O line that comes through Snowflake, West Virginia, into Fort Spring is the Mann Tunnel. And uh, Mr. Mann started with very meager uh, beginnings and went to Alderson and was working as a bank clerk and then from there he made connections and became a multi-millionaire and ultimately here in the coal business uh, in such a big way in the very pinnacle of the coal boom of West Virginia. Oh, amen. This was, this was a boom. It sure was. And man is the name IT man, man, itman, is, it was certainly known nationally. And it's funny that it's interesting that his, uh, it didn't come out of the industrialism of Pennsylvania, as did many coal operators. Right. He came out of, of uh, farm country yeah. in uh, the beautiful Greenbrier Valley. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, interesting enough, in our history book of Alderson, West Virginia, that was written by Thomas W. Dixon in 1967, there's a, quite an article in that book about Isaac T. Mann. Mm -hmm. Now, he's with the Chesapeake and Ohio Railway Historical Society, Yes, he is. Right? He sure is. Yes, what a historian. Yeah. Well, great. Uh, can we see the other part let's, of the building? Let's go look at the office part of the building. We okay. won't go into all of it, but okay. just enough. And this is the Logia, right? Logia, L-O-G-G-I-A. Fascinating. I love this stonework. Here's another uh, exceptional classical feature. Absolutely. This is something that you certainly see in a more uh, developed classical formal building. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Pan around here real quick. Now this part of the building was last used in the 1990s, is that correct? I believe it was the 1990s. Yes, okay. it had become a, a apartments for a homeless shelter. And so this had been the, the bookkeeping and cashiering part of the mm -hmm. property? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, many things would have gone on in here at the time. Um, certainly, the, the post office was was in here, and you can see that these were ideally suited for that oh, sort yes. of activity. Amazing. Mm -hmm. The details on are both sides of the wall. Startling. Yes. Yeah. It must have been something to see. What it would it have been its original incarnation. Yeah. So the company offices were here. There were dentist offices in here. There was a billiards parlor in here. Um, there were doctor's offices in here. It was really, again, the, the center of the everything important that happened in town happened in this complex. Okay. Well, Dave, I know we've been going on for a while and there's so much to see here, but can you tell me a little bit about where the for sale information might be posted that you're getting uh, accumulated uh, to put in a a, uh, a long listing? Sure, sure. It's at foxfirenation.com and you'll likely find it under foxfirenation.com slash listings slash historic Itman Company Store, I believe is what we're naming it. Okay, great. Well, uh, it would be fascinating uh, sometime if you could arrange to let the public come in and uh, see at least part of this building. And uh, mm -hmm. so uh, maybe we'll do an update on that. 
Uh, and, and thank you for taking the time to meet with me today. I've always wanted to go through this building and this is a real treat for me. That's a treat for me to be able to show it off. All right, Dave. Well, thank you and I'll be talking soon. Okay, thanks, Randy. See y'all. Yeah.